first of all, let me thank NetHealth for inviting me to this, their eighth annual summit. And I was looking at the agenda and the program, and I find that a lot of luminaries and a lot of wise people have addressed and participated in the, uh, the conference. Uh, so, so I think I'm sure uh, they must have contributed tremendously to the, you know, this space of, of health, which is so important in today's context, especially. It was always important, but now post-COVID, uh, and, and we don't know whether it is post-COVID or still some more things are to come. It's, it's so unpredictable, but I think health has emerged as one of the most critical you know, aspects of our lives. Uh, so uh, uh, I think, and, and also I'd like to uh, thank NetHealth because I have been in this space for last about 14 months, and I have found NetHealth to be at the forefront of, of many of these deliberations, brainstorming, thinking, innovations, you know, they are really ahead on the curve and, and they are very much uh, proactive in this space. So, so it's really a privilege for me to participate in their annual summit. And now, uh, as the speaker whom I was hearing a little while ago was talking that digital is the way forward, especially in the health space, uh, and of course in many other spaces, but but uh, in health uh, today, I think digital is, is the way forward, uh, whether you talk of uh, the consumers, whether you talk of doctors, whether you talk of hospitals or, or any other parts. And I think the only way to ensure that we can create a, a ubiquitous quality, affordable uh, healthcare system, which is also uh, you know, puts consumer or the patient at the center of the universe. I think digital, again, is the way forward. And the Honorable Prime Minister's announcement on 15th of August 2020 of the Aishman Bharat uh, Digital Health Mission at that time, wherein it was started in about six union territories and it continued to be uh, sort of working in those territories uh, for about a year and a half. Uh, I think that was a very, very important announcement. And, and uh, thereafter, the developments which have taken place have given us the confidence that this mission or this particular architecture uh, can be taken forward. And it has the potential to transform the delivery of health services and healthcare in this country. So, so what has been done is that we have, uh, you know, sort of done a proof of concept of many of the building blocks of this whole mission, uh, and which was, as you know, announced nationwide launched happened in the September last year, and the the all these building blocks have been have been completed. Uh, so I would like to share some of those building blocks with you, and of course to say that. This uh, project, I mean, it's one thing to create technology architecture, which of course is also very important. But I think the most important part is its adoption. And adoption is the critical aspect and it will determine whether the project or the mission becomes successful or not. And in this particular case, because the stakeholders are varied and many, starting from the clinics to the hospitals to the doctors to the laboratories to the pharmacy pharmacies and and of course at the center of all is the patient now this is a very large ecosystem of of players and unless each one of these players adopt this uh, mission and the digital technologies uh, this will not succeed uh, so so i uh, would add you know, I would begin my intervention by requesting and urging all of you and all of us to really, uh, you know, promote this this mission because that's where I think we will we will end up uh, creating a beautiful ecosystem of patient care services delivery, as also wonderful data analytics platforms because a huge amount of data will be generated, the anonymized part of which can be used for. Uh, health policy research and, and many other kind of interventions can happen due to that. So the broad building blocks of the Aishman Bharat uh, digital mission, before that I must also say that 
we, the India as a country, has really in the last decade or so created a we have created a huge digital infrastructure, digital connectivity infrastructure. So today we have 1.2 billion mobile connections. We have got 800 million plus internet connections. We have got 600 million plus smartphones in this country, growing at the rate of 25 billion per quarter. So it's it's really a beautiful uh, a, you know digital infrastructure. And of course we have the cheapest data rates in the world. We have the entire country covered with 4G technologies and 5G is coming now. So we have this ground is ready of the physical digital connectivity infrastructure. And on top of that, we have created a number of digital public goods which are really working at a scale. So we have created Aadhaar and 1.3 billion people of this country have got Aadhaar. Aadhaar offers services like authentication. We have done 60 billion plus authentication. Uh, I mean, you can imagine on an average, every citizen has done 60 authentications in this period. And in this period of seven, eight years. And we have done electronic KYC, which have actually uh, made subscription into services extremely easy. So whether you want to have a mobile SIM or whether you want to get a ration or whether you want to open a bank account, all electronic KYC is what is required, which is instantaneous from anywhere, anytime. Similarly, we have created digital signatures. We have created a beautiful payment mechanism. I think this is a unique payment mechanism in the whole world, where we clocked 4.5 billion transactions in one month last month. I mean, this is this is unimaginable. It, it actually surpasses all the debit cards and credit cards put together. So, and, and it is free of cost. And it is instantaneous. You don't have to wait. You know, I transfer one rupee, and that one rupee goes as one rupee to the other person. So this is this is a beautiful, uh, you know, system which we have created. So we have created a lot of digital public goods, which are horizontal in nature, in the sense that they can be plugged into any domain. So, for example, Aadhaar authentication can be plugged into, you know, when a patient checks into the hospital, he or she can be verified whether he is eligible for Aishman Bharat or not using the Aadhaar authentication and, you know, in a second, uh, two or three seconds, that fast. So we have, and, you know, imagine the latest, uh, uh, you know, public good which we made, COVID. Now, COVID is an example where, which, which actually is a record in itself. I, I, I don't think any system has a scale to, you know, about close to 1.8 billion in a matter of a year simply a year in one you know about two billion in a year i don't think any system has even even for get, getting one one billion you know systems have taken months uh, years together to to reach that scale and this is a scalable interoperable inclusive open standards open api based open source system now that's the capability which our country has got so as far as technology capability is concerned we, are, we have proved that we can create architectures which are interoperable, frugal, uh, and, and based on standards. So what we have done in digital mission thus far is that we have created one is the personal health record architecture, whereby a person, the patient or individual, is able to, you know, sort of view his longitudinal health record. And he is able to link his health, his or her health record wherever they exist. To, to his system, can store it on his phone if he wants to, or is able to share with the doctor or with anybody else. So that's the, that's the architecture which has been created. And the beauty of this is that this architecture does not aggregate the data at a single point. It's a federated architecture, which means that the health facilities are now enabled to provide this information on the authenticated on the authentication or authority of the individual, which means that I give a consent token, I give a token saying that this is me and the hospital will then enable my record to be linked and I can share that record and I can get that record to anybody whom I want to share. So this is the, this is the architecture which is a federated data architecture, which is privacy preserving, which is consent driven, that kind of stuff, that kind of structure has been.
we are creating health facility registry which means all the facilities whether they are laboratories hospitals and hospitals of all types whether ayurvedic or or uh, you know allopathic whatever system of medicine they are there that registry will be there and it authenticated registry so that's another artifact which we have created then of course you have health professional registry which means the doctors or the web or or the other service other kind of uh, health professionals allied health professionals that registry is there and then any person will be able to then search book away services so that's another component which has been created there is a consent manager which has been created which ensures that no data sharing takes place without the explicit consent of the data owner who is the base so this is what we have created and the most important part is we are creating you know telecommunication teleconsultation part we are creating that also and the unified health interface is created being created which is actually provides interoperability among various disparate systems so irrespective of what client application you have got you will be able to connect with any service provider's application on the same domain so if you have a teleconsultation application a and the service provider or the doctor have got telecommunication part b or application b that doctor will be able to communicate with the patient and that this this pipe which we call unified health interface shall allow that to happen so this is the this is the framework which has been created the framework is ready there are large number of partners who are working with us the private sector and, and please remember this is not this is just a framework being created by the government by the national health authority this basically enables innovations on the on the sites innovations in the system so there are as many as 400 or maybe i, I think i am i am a little outdated it's now 700 you know partners who are working with us creating all kinds of applications whether it is phr applications or teleconsultation applications or other applications this is actually a great ecosystem which is emerging there are software companies there are startups who are basically creating these these solutions and the basic characteristics of these solutions is that they are all interoperable solutions they each solution will each application will talk to the other application of the same same domain or the same functionality so this is the architecture which which we are creating uh, private sector is participating the health hmis systems i think the a uh, gentleman who was speaking before me was talking about the data being you know sort of uh, traveling from one facility to another in, in the sense of sharing by the by the patient at his or her consent but that kind of you know uh, thing is is being created so so digitization of the entire health system or health ecosystem is going to lead to lot of efficiency lot of cost uh, you know advantages and i think it is going to be a win 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 for everybody and that's what we have to realize only thing is it's is you know sometimes habits die hard so habits do take time to change you know who realized just about two years back that i will be speaking to you or you know we will all be having virtual webinar in the household word nowadays so you know we have all realized that it's possible to you know connect virtually and and still have that feeling of being physically connected of course minus the uh, tea and the snacks and other kinds of things and and of course the phone home which happens when you meet uh, meet in a, in a hall or in a hotel whatever so so this is now we have used to and one of the positive aspects of this dreaded uh, you know sort of disease called corona has been digitization you know we have accepted digital as the way forward and we think that it is something which can be done and therefore if all the participants come together and realize this vision i think india will be one of the few sort of one of the i think the unique country in the world to have created such such kind of ecosystem there are ecosystems which exist in western countries in usa in europe but they are all driven by monopolies driven by few players in the market and those players are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and that's actually the the nature of the 
digital uh, sort of systems which are based on you know private kind of non open apis non standard apis so you continue to you know shrink the space and you know just one or two players remain in the market and everybody else has has vanished so this is the system which we have had thus far but now what we are doing is we are building a system which is entirely democratic transparent you know completely eliminates information asymmetry this is what we are building and i think uh, through this uh, this uh, conference i seek the support and help from all the participants here and the net health as an organization to essentially uh, you know sort of uh, make this happen this can happen i mean i i i don't want to compare projects but but i can say that we did aadhar this project is much more difficult than even aadhar and you may ask me why because in aadhar there were only two stakeholders one was the government which had the money to enroll people another were the people who were actually looking for identity a verifiable identity and both of them participated happily and you know we created of course we had to do a lot of other technology stuff and other things but this he this is a project which has got multiple stakeholders and therefore if one or two stakeholders don't come in the game will not begin and if the game is to begin and if we have to create history and if we have to really realize the dream of the prime minister's digital india program then i think we have to work together and we have to really transform the delivery of health services in our country thank you once again for inviting me to this conference it has always been a pleasure to interact with that health